I'm Vili. Good morning to you. First, just a reaction from you. When you had the news that the inquest was being reopened, what did you think? Uh, good morning, and thanks for having me on your show. Um, I think it is incredibly important that we get to terms with uh, ruthless interrogations and, and I suspect actual killings in, deten in police custody at the time um, as a part of, of building our country for the future. And especially I think for the families of those involved to, to get an opportunity to really get down to the truth about what happened I think is incredibly important. Do you think that truth is important for closure? It is. I think both a closure for the families, but I think it's also very important for us as a country to, to get to understand what happened at that time, what the things were that were done wrong, and to make sure that we never repeat those dreadful acts of that time. Yeah, I mean, not just the family, I guess, as I said in the intro, nobody believed at the time that Neil Agat had committed suicide. I remember myself being a young reporter in 1982, writing and reading that story when the news broke at the time on Radio Mozambique's English service, and we it, it was really like unbelievable how could they say such an activist would have done that to himself a man who was a medical doctor by day and a unionist uh, by night and you were part of that movement at the time when you cast your mind back to 1982 what stands out in your mind about Neil Agat's contribution I, I think it was sort of part of a larger contribution you may recall that the uh, early union movement was being formed from the sort of mid 70s and he was uh, you know a number of us as students at the different universities participated in trying to help build the union movement so he played a very active and key role in, in uh, Johannesburg in the union movement at the time now, you had the occasion to, to meet him now and again, and you could share with uh, our viewers, what do you recall, what kind of a, of a man was he? Um, I only met him a couple of times um, at conferences uh, at that time, but I was always deeply impressed by his commitment to freedom in South Africa, by his commitment to help people who were less well off, particularly through the, his work. And, you know, I, he really was one of the sort of people in the generation just before me that uh, I really looked up to. Yeah. Now, I, I saw earlier uh, my colleague Vuyom Vogel speaking to uh, Frank Chikane, who was a neighbor in detention and is one of the few people uh, who are still alive in the country who last saw Neil Agate alive. And he said he was not in, in, in a good state after having been tortured for days and days. And, and the people who were his chief interrogators, I mean, we understand one of them died a, a few years ago and they were, their names were mentioned at the TRC. But such an inquest, do you think, should really go all the way so even just this can seem to be done by anybody who was involved in torturing uh, Neil Agate at the time. I mean, whether we'll see justice in the sense of people going to prison uh, may not be very likely given how long ago this was and how old people are and how long criminal trials will take. But I do think the inquest is an incredibly important uh, thing to do because it does allow us to get to know much more of the detail what happened and it allows uh, the people involved to be questioned under oath and to uh, give their versions and to be cross-examined. So for me it's, a, it's an incredibly important part of us uh, getting to terms with our history and what happened and hopefully that we also have justice for the families in the process. Yeah, I mean, we saw recently the Ahmed Timol case uh, in point, and now we're coming up with the Neil Agate one. Do you, do you think as a country we, other people should pursue uh, similar uh, inquests for other cases that people are still wondering exactly what happened? Because some people are saying the Truth and Reconciliation Commission didn't really tell us exactly everything. I think that TRC was very important because 
I think a huge amount of information that we were not aware of came out in the TRC. And I think the fact that people were given indemnity if they told the truth, I think assisted that process very much. But it is also true that many people did not go to the TRC, and I think that's what we are dealing with here, is how we deal with those cases of especially deaths in detention where uh, the perpetrators never asked for amnesty, the families never got, in a sense, to know what happened to their loved ones and could come to terms with that. So I think the process is incredibly important for us. Thank you very much, Willi Hofmeyer, uh, who is a fellow anti-apartheid activist with Neil Aget. His death is now the subject of another inquest that's uh, starting uh, today, uh, and he passed away in the hands of the then apartheid security branch at the then John Foster Square, which is today Central Johannesburg Hospital, on the 5th of February 1982, after 70 days in detention without trial.